What's up guys? Paramoto back at you with another video. How are you guys doing today? I am fantastic. Let's get to it. Anyway guys, so today is a special day. Today is right every day November episode 5 or 6. I don't really remember. Either way, I'm happy to be with you guys. Today I got a bit of a topic for you, video for you. Today I want to talk about Craster Math. So it's a little phrase coined by um, one of my old favorite motovloggers, Wooden Chairs, was Crasher Math. Aftermath of crashing. I want to talk to you guys about how i changed since I've crashed. I've crashed twice. The first time I crashed, I had a um, just about 19-year-old kid decide that he wanted to turn left out of a right turn only. And what he did was he ended up turning left out of a right turn only, right in front of my path to travel, and I hit his front panel on his car and I went over his car at about 40 miles an hour and I started rolling into oncoming traffic. It was a terrible day. My second crash was 100% my fault. I was coming home from work. I was dead tired. I had just worked a 24 hour shift and um, what ended up happening was I didn't pay attention to the person in front of the person in front of me and that person was stopped at a green light and the person in front of me didn't realize that, neither did I. And uh, what ended up happening is I um, had to brake as hard as my CBR 600 would allow me to brake and I went like that and then about almost 90 degrees, I'd say about 11 o'clock, I said fuck this, I'm, not, I'm out of this game because I was about to go totally loop and uh, I took two giant steps into the back of a bus. I want to talk about since then, how I operate, how I ride, what has changed since. Oh my god, this guy. Oh my god, this guy. Oh my god, this guy is going so slow. And now we have something stupid happening up front. People are so dumb. So since my crash, I have changed the way that I ride. I have toned down the aggressiveness and I have stopped following people as close as I once was. People have been like mentioning to me before those crashes on how close that I followed people, I was not giving myself two seconds. And the way that you give yourself two seconds, like that truck just passed that fire hydrant. You count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and if you don't get to two, you're following too close. And that's how it works. It's really easy, it's super simple. And it'll, it'll save your life. That's how you stop a following too close crash. You just need to have your wits about you and don't fucking follow too close. And pay attention to everything that's going on. The other crash, was not my fault at all, but I probably could have prevented it by watching the road 100%, like I do now. So before I, I did that crash, basically what I paid attention on the road was dire basically directly in front of me. If it wasn't directly in front of me, I wasn't paying attention to it. Basically everybody on the road needs to become your priority to pay attention to. Hey, wait with this Harley Rider. I love it. You guys think they're so tough? Okay, yeah, so like I was saying before we were rudely interrupted by that red light, before I crashed, everything in front of me was the only thing I paid attention to. I really didn't care about what was going on the sides. I just had a very na naive, like, very cager way of thinking about stuff. Like right now, I'm very concerned with what that guy's doing very concerned 100% concerned with what he was doing so that's what being a cager and having a cager mentality will get you it'll get you killed out here ever since my first crash I have basically been paying attention to everything that goes on and honestly what I think is your responsibility to pay attention to on the road is everything everything directly in front of you the ground gravel things on the side of the road animals stupid cagers not paying attention i even pay attention 100 percent to what's going on behind me because motorcycles lists get rear-ended all the time so you have to pay attention 100 percent all the time the guy behind me did he pay attention to the red light do i need to just go you know like that's something i would have done if he wasn't paying attention i would have like probably veered off to the side and let him just go straight through or I would have just gone through the light because it's better to go through the light and be responsible for a red light violation than it is to be hit and hurt and maybe killed and maybe worse, like paralyzed the rest of your life or anything like that. So not only do I pay attention to the people behind me coming to a quick stop at a red light, I also pay attention 
to the people in front of me. And when I stop at a red light and I'm in a line of traffic, I always orient myself to a position where if somebody rear-ended me, I would not get sandwiched between myself and the car in front of me. And the way that I do that is by, you know, staying off to the right or left. So if somebody hit me, I would hopefully, in theory, get shot off to the side, or maybe I'll go up and over, or maybe I'll just get a leg pinned instead of my body. You know, and I'd much rather shatter a leg than, and you know, have a hard time walking for a while, than have my pelvis shattered or something like that, and have years of rehab and never be right ever again. If you shatter a leg, you'll all, you know, equally be never right again. But if you shatter, shatter a pelvis, you might never walk again. Left turners are the devil out here. They literally don't pay attention, and they'll turn out right in front of you like they didn't even see you, like you have a cloaking device on. They don't care. Cagers are not playing with the same set of rules that we are. If you're a cager, which I'm a cager a lot of the time too, I own a car. So I can't badmouth everybody that drives a car. Like this guy going 10 under the speed limit for no fucking reason. Find the gas pedal, you motherfucker. I can't blame cagers for everything. We are sometimes hard to see. They're not, but they're not looking for motorcyclists. That's the thing. Like, they're looking for other cars and trucks. That's what they recognize as a problem. They do not see motorcyclists because they're not expecting us. They're not paying attention for us. We're not in their mind as being thought. So we need to look out for ourselves out here. So here's an example of how I try to keep myself safe at a red light. So I'm looking at the Range Rover behind me. And now I'm positioning myself about as close to the white line as you possibly can be and not be in the other lane. Like my foot is like three or four inches away from the, the white line. So hopefully somebody rear ends this Range Rover and he hits me, hopefully I'll have a chance to try to get off to the right. And it's just, the name of the game is going home. For the biggest way that I've changed since I've wrecked twice is that I've gone from literally not paying attention to anything, being oblivious, only paying attention to things that I'm re personally responsible for, like the cars ahead of me and not going too fast, to making everything my responsibility. Everything is your responsibility out here if you want to get home safe. The routes that we take, to the people behind us, to how fast we go. Like right now, I'm gonna take a slightly longer way, a less direct route, and I'm gonna move out to the right because this Chevy Tahoe is riding like a dick. But I'm gonna take a slightly longer way home because there's less cars and there's less dangerous intersections. And I would implore everybody to do the same thing. Like if you wanna stay safe out here, you need to change what you pay attention to. You need to go from paying attention to only things directly in front of you to everything around you. Pay attention to every car. Pay attention to the cars in front of the car in front of you. Pay attention to the cars on the right, on the cars on the left. People turning out from, from God knows where. People doing whatever. People behind you driving aggressively. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be out of my norm if this guy behind me started getting really aggressive and getting up on my ass and not giving me room to turn and not paying attention and, and you know, not giving me, you know, a proper following distance, it wouldn't be out of the norm for me to pull off. Like, I might go down a, a side street for a second. I might just go really slow. I might go really slow and just piss him off so he gets the hint. I might turn around and just give him a look. Just go ahead and turn around and give him one of those. Like, they know that you're there. They know that you're paying attention to them. And they know that you don't appreciate how close they're getting. And typically, they'll back off. Those are Paramoto's ways to stay safe on the road. Um, welcome back to Ride Every Day November. If you haven't already, please like the video. Please subscribe down below. It helps me out a ton. My subscribers are awesome. We are just ticking away the subscriber count. It's been a long time since we've had a day where we haven't gained at least two. So we're growing good. We got a good rate of growth. I'm so appreciative of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Deuces.